Hey, I'm Adam Jusko from ProudMoney.com. In this video, we are going to look at the best Capital One credit cards. We're going to rank them all. There are two in particular that stand above the rest. But before we do it, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you have not already. And if you have already, I thank you for doing so. So we are going to rank the Capital One credit card lineup here. Two cards, I think, stand above all the rest of them, but we will look at them all. But if you want the good stuff, it's going to be right here on the front end. So to me, the no-brainer number one card in the Capital One lineup, the Capital One Saver One Rewards card. No annual fee, get 3% cash back on dining, 3% cash back on entertainment, 3% back at grocery stores, 3% back on most streaming services, 1% everywhere else. As I make this video, you've got a bonus opportunity of $200 if you spend $500 with the card in the first three months of having it. So very easy to get to that bonus. You've got a 0% offer on purchases and balance transfers for the first 15 months that you have the card. It has no foreign transaction fees. In fact, all Capital One cards have no foreign transaction fees. So this is the card that would be the biggest crowd pleaser across the board with no annual fee. Good rewards, a 0% offer, pretty much the whole package. Number two, the Capital One Venture X, which competes in the high-end luxury travel credit card space. It has an annual fee of $395, which is sizable, but which is actually less than a lot of the cards it competes against out there on the market. And it has some credits and bonuses that you can see right up front how you can sort of justify that annual fee or how that annual fee sort of gets paid for even before we look at some of the other features of the card. So you've got a $300 annual travel credit as long as you book $300 or more in travel through Capital One's travel portal, you're gonna get that $300 travel credit each year. Now that is a bit of a limitation. You have to use Capital One's travel portal, but as long as that's okay with you, you're gonna get that $300 back. In the first year, in terms of a bonus, as a new card holder, you can earn a bonus of 75,000 miles if you spend at least $4,000 with the card in the first three months of having it. Now a mile in Capital One's uh, definition is essentially like a point. Each mile is worth one penny in travel when you book through Capital One's travel portal. Now you do have some travel transfer partners with Capital One where you could transfer your miles into their programs and potentially could get more value out of those miles. But just at the base level, you could think of a mile as a point with each point being worth a penny. So anyway, 75,000 miles then is going to be worth at least $750 of travel. So even with a $395 annual fee in that first year, you've got that $300 dollar travel credit, you've got $750 of travel, assuming that you spend enough to get that bonus. And then every year after that, you have a yearly anniversary bonus of 10,000 miles, which you could think of at the very least being worth $100 worth of travel. So even in the years after the first year, you're gonna have a $395 annual fee, but you would still have the $300 travel credit and a $100 travel bonus, essentially, which right there sort of covers the annual fee. So that's nice to see that value right up front. And then you've got the everyday rewards and perks that go on top of the things we just talked about. So two miles per dollar on all of your purchases with the Capital One Venture X, regardless of the purchasing category, except you'll get 10 points per dollar on car rentals and hotel stays booked through the Capital One travel portal. You will get five points per dollar, five miles per dollar through Capital One Travel when you book flights there. You have access to the Priority Pass network of airport lounges with the Capital One Venture X, as well as access to Capital One's own lounges. As I make this video, there's only one Capital One lounge in Dallas. However, the Priority Pass network is over a thousand lounges worldwide. You have uh, cell phone insurance with this card. You have a credit for TSA PreCheck or Global Entry, the programs that help you get through airport security faster. You've got no foreign transaction fees like all Capital One cards. So overall, you've got a pretty nice package here. And I think in particular, if you are someone that wants a little bit more of that luxury travel experience, in particular, the access to airport lounges, this is a way to get it at a lower price point. And with the travel credits and the bonuses that come with this card, it is a lot easier to justify a $395 annual fee than some of the other cards on the market that give you lounge access but are going to charge you $550, going to charge you $695, that sort of thing. 
So Saver 1 and Venture X are Capital One's flagship cards as far as I am concerned. Now some people would say the card here at number three also should be up in there, but I will dispute that. So that is the Capital One Venture Rewards card, which is sort of a step down from the Venture X. It has a smaller annual fee at only $95, and it does have some good things going on, especially in the first year. You're gonna get two miles per dollar on all of your purchases with the card, except you could get five miles per dollar on car rentals and hotels booked through Capital One Travel. Bonus on this card, the same as the Venture X bonus, at least as I make this video, 75,000 miles if you spend $4,000 with the card in the first three months of having it. So that's a nice big bonus on a card with a $95 annual fee for sure. Now you've got TSA PreCheck or Global Entry Credit, same thing as you could get on the Capital One Venture X, no foreign transaction fees. So a lot of good things on this card in the first year with that big bonus. But beyond the first year, harder to justify. You're gonna have a $95 annual fee for a card that for the most part, you're gonna get two miles per dollar on all of your purchases. Certainly nothing wrong with that, but depending on how you redeem those points, you could just as easily get yourself a 2% cash back credit card and use it for any kind of travel you wanted. All right, now we are gonna go a little faster. Number four, Capital One Quicksilver, no annual fee, 1.5% cash back on all of your purchases, a bonus opportunity for new card holders of $200 if you spend $500 in the first three months of having the card, at least as I make this video, you're gonna have a 0% offer on purchases and balance transfers for 15 months. This card, certainly nothing wrong with it, but there are other cards out there on the market that give you 2% cash back on all of your purchases versus the 1.5% you could get here. Now, the Capital One Quicksilver might be a little bit easier to qualify for than some of the cards out there on the market that are giving you a little more in rewards. So there is a little bit of a balance there. Capital One tends to take people whose credit scores are maybe a little bit lower, even though they say this is a card for excellent credit. Now, if your credit is much lower, there also is a Capital One Quicksilver One card that is the same in many ways, but has a $39 annual fee, and we'll talk about that in a sec. Number five, the Capital One Saver Rewards card. Now this card has a $95 annual fee, and it's sort of an upgraded version of that Saver One card that I put at the top of the list. This card doesn't really give you enough to justify that $95 annual fee, in my opinion. You're getting 4% cash back on dining, 4% on entertainment, 4% on streaming services, 3% at grocery stores. You've got a bonus opportunity of $300 if you spend at least $3,000 with the card in the first three months of having it, at least as I make this video, that is the bonus offer. So this card has you know, a bit of an upgrade. You're getting more in some of those categories, but unless you're spending $10,000 more on this card in that dining, entertainment, and streaming services category than you want on the Saver 1, the Saver 1 would end up being a better deal. Yes, this has a little bit better of a bonus, but not that much better of a bonus, and you have to spend a lot more to get it. So I'm not really sure who Capital One thinks this card is for at this point. I think they need to offer a little bit more if they're going to keep that $95 annual fee. Number six, Capital One Platinum MasterCard. No annual fee, no rewards, really nothing else to recommend it except for the fact that this is a card oftentimes that people that have lower credit scores, especially if they're rebuilding credit, they oftentimes find that this is sort of the first card that they can qualify for from a major issuer if they have had credit problems in the past. So there's not, nothing that they're really getting so much from this card, but oftentimes it is the stepping stone. It is sort of the uh, signal to them that they have crawled their way back up into the possibility of getting better cards down the road. And as long as they make their payments on time, they might get a better card from Capital One or another issuer. So nothing great about this card. I would not tell you to get it if you're someone with good credit, but if you've had credit problems in the past, you might have a soft spot in your heart for the Platinum MasterCard. Number seven is the Capital One Venture One card. So this is the third in the Venture lineup here, and it is the worst of the three, and it's actually the worst of all Capital One's credit cards as far as I'm concerned in terms of like what it offers to who it offers it to. So Capital One Venture One, no annual fee. You're getting 1.25 miles per dollar on all of your purchases with the card, which you could think of as being like 1.25%. So if you're looking at a cash back card at 1.25%, it would be very non-competitive with a lot of stuff on the market. Overall, not a very enticing package. 
So those are the big seven from Capital One. This might be your jumping off point of this video if you are looking for sort of their mainstream credit cards that anyone could potentially be interested in. I'm gonna go through the rest of the Capital One lineup here as well though, and there are cards that may have a place in your wallet depending on your situation. So earlier I mentioned the Capital One Quicksilver One card, which is essentially just a version of the Capital One Quicksilver for people that have lower credit scores. So still 1.5% cash back on all of your purchases but this card does have a $39 annual fee and some other features that make it a little less desirable than the regular Capital One Quicksilver Rewards. But for some people, this is a card that if you have a lower credit score, you might be willing to pay that $39 annual fee as you continue to build up that score and get yourself to a position where you can get a better card. Capital One offers three student credit cards, two of which I would recommend, one of which I would not. There is a student version of the Saver One card that we talked about at the very beginning of this video. There's also a student version of the Quicksilver card, and they are essentially the same in terms of the everyday rewards that they offer. I would recommend either one of those if you are a college student who is trying to build credit for the first time. Capital One also has its Journey Rewards card, which is a little more paltry in terms of the rewards it gives, and there's really nothing better about that card than the other two, so I'm not sure why Capital One keeps it around. Capital One has two secured cards for people that are rebuilding or building credit for the first time. Both of these cards, the Capital One Secured MasterCard or the Capital One Quicksilver Secured card, are going to require a refundable security deposit. So you put some money down in order to get the card. That money will come back to you when you no longer want the card or when Capital One thinks that you have sort of built that credit score up a little bit higher and they might decide to graduate you and give you that security deposit back and then you could continue to use the card as before. So most people don't love the idea of putting money down to get a credit card, but if you really feel like it could help you in building your credit, this is an option. The Capital One Quicksilver card does have rewards, so that makes it a little more desirable than just the standard secured MasterCard. There might be a little bit higher threshold to being approved for that Capital One Quicksilver card, Probably not that much of a difference though. Capital One also offers a number of business credit cards, none of which I am particularly enthused about, so I'm not gonna go through them individually other than to tell you that I think the best of the lot is the Capital One Spark 2X Miles card. And then I also want to mention Capital One on their website. They have a number of cards in their lineup that are sort of the versions we've already talked about, but they will have a label at the end that says for good credit, like Saver for good credit or Quicksilver for good credit or Venture for good credit. And on the surface, you might think that means for like, you know, the best customers, but what it really means is a step down from excellent credit. So if your credit score doesn't quite qualify you for some of those cards where they want excellent credit, which is sort of dubious in terms of what that means to Capital One. Well, they might offer you one of these cards and what you're getting is sort of the same card that we've talked about, except bonus stripped out and any 0% offers on purchases and balance transfers stripped out as well. So you're getting a watered down version of one of those cards. I wouldn't suggest to anyone to go to the Capital One website and just make your own decision on what your credit is and apply for one of those cards. It's more likely that if you applied for one of the other cards and your credit wasn't quite good enough, the Capital One might say, well, we're not gonna give you that card, but we'll give you this uh, card without the bonus and without the 0% offer. So two great cards from Capital One. All the rest of them have some uh, you know, limitations as far as I'm concerned. Would love to hear your questions, comments in that comment section below. Otherwise, I thank you for watching. And as always, please go to proudmoney.com where we do credit card reviews, we talk personal finance, we talk deals, and all sorts of other fun stuff too. If you're not gonna go to the website or leave a comment, you might want to watch this video.